Good morning, everyone. And welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Uh, thank you for being here uh, this, uh, this morning as we worship our Lord. Uh, this weekend is uh, Friendship and Reformation uh, Weekend. And uh, of course, uh, we remember uh, the great gift of grace that we have in Jesus Christ and what a blessing it is to have God's word accessible to us uh, that we may read and believe and share it with the world. Uh, it's also nice to see all of that red out there. Looks like the Long Island Expressway. <laughs> and uh, we are also uh, blessed to um, have our um, uh, acolyte and uh, Crucifer uh, serving again as that, that will be starting up as confirmation has started. May our worship today be glorifying to God and a blessing to you. Amen. Our welcoming hymn, The Law of God is Good and Wise. Please rise. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pause to reflect on our sins and the forgiveness we're promised in Jesus. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. 
For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And also with you. Since we have received the forgiveness of Christ, we now share with one another the peace of Christ. victory for our God. Alleluia. pray. Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies and grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
The Old Testament lesson is a reading from uh, Revelation chapter 14. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. Here is a call for the endurance of the saints, those who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on, Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Good morning. Second lesson, a reading from Romans chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets hear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forth as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he may be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. Or is God the God of Jews only? Is he not only the God of Gentiles also? Yes, of Gentiles also, since God is one who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith. Do we then overthrow the law by this faith? By no means. On the contrary, we uphold the law. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the Alleluia verse. Gospel according to St. John, the eighth chapter. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham, and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say, You will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. And I'd now like to welcome the children forward for the children's message.
صورت ہے اچھا کیا All right. Well, thank you for being here, boys and girls, and it's wonderful to see you today in church. Um, I thought we'd get started with the fun part first, okay? So you, wanna, you can pick two, okay? You want to pick another one? Yep, yeah, okay. You can pick two. Pick two. One. Okay. All right. That's great. Well, I hope you like your gift. Okay? And uh, let's see. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those are two dollars a piece. So you each owe me four dollars for your gift. You don't carry cash, do you? Your generation is all debit cards. It's, it's all it is. Oh, that's right. Is that how gifts work? You give somebody something and then they pay you for it? What do you say? Where's, I don't know where Victoria is. <laughs> that's not usually how gifts work, right? On Christmas morning, when you open up all your presents, then do you um, have to, to leave money for those presents? No? You just get to have them? They're just free? They're free gifts? I know you have money at home. <laughs> but you don't need the money for a gift, right? Because a gift is free. It's somebody that uh, you give a gift because you love somebody, and you appreciate them, and you want them to have it, right? But you don't expect anything back. Well, the greatest gift that God gave us is his forgiveness, right? Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and he rose on Easter so that we could live with him in heaven, right, when we believe in him. And what does that cost us? Do we have to pay for Jesus' forgiveness? No, it's free. It's a gift, and that's called grace, And uh, grace is a gift, and God's gift to us is that uh, we can live with him forever. And just like those gifts, you don't have to pay anything for them, because gifts are free. So remember, God's gift of grace is free. It's a gift, and he loves you very much. All right, you can have a good week, and you can go back to your seat. We now join in singing, By Grace I'm Saved. Bye.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our sermon text for this Reformation weekend comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 8, as just read, as well as these words from Romans 3. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. In other words, we're not saved by our works, but by Christ's. Jesus' deeds in his death and resurrection have set us free indeed from sin. According to God's word alone, we're saved by grace alone, in Christ alone, through faith alone, for God's glory alone. And free indeed, we're free to follow Jesus wherever he may lead us. Thus, in this week's sermon, let's focus on the freedom we have in Christ and how we've received spiritual liberty not to live any way we'd like, for that is simply captivity to sin in ourselves and the world, but rather to live free from sin and death by faith alone, both now and forever in the grace and forgiveness of our merciful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Which brings us to our first point. We've been set free from sin, unbound by grace alone. As Jesus said to those who had believed in him in our gospel lesson, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. In short, true freedom is forgiveness and eternal life in Jesus Christ. Because evil is real, and it's the cause of people saying harmful things, the root of all violent behavior, prejudiced thinking, harmful thoughts, selfish acts, everything harmful and hateful, divisive and deadly. In a word, sin. Evil, sinful deeds are the cause. Slavery to the devil is the result. And death and hell are the cost. However, the good news is this. There's law and order as well. There's justice and mercy in place. It belongs to God, and it was accomplished by grace in Jesus' death and resurrection from the grave for the forgiveness of all who repent and believe that he came to save. As Jesus said, God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. That's the saving gospel. And did you notice? Jesus made no mention of any good deed other than his own. It must be done for our salvation. Christ paid the spiritual price of death and hell that we may live, free indeed, solely by his grace. Redeemed by the sacrifice of his blood, this means we're now free to serve our righteous God. With his guidance and merciful assistance, we've been liberated to think pure thoughts, say loving and uniting things, strive to live peaceably, engage in selfless and generous acts, and serve others in love before ourselves. Essentially, we're free to behave as the body of Christ, but only by the grace of Christ. We're not forgiven by this behavior, nor set free because of good deeds or kind words. Salvation is the free gift of God, the gracious reward of the liberating work Jesus Christ alone fulfilled on the cross. It's undeserved by us, but it has been given to us. Thanks be to God that we're now free from captivity to sin and death, despair and evil. Evil's, hol evil's holding cell is behind us. It's in our past, eventually forgotten, yet eternally forgiven already by grace. Our transgressions as reformed prisoners in Christ are as far from us as the East is from the West in the eyes of the Father because of the grace of his Son. 
and the sanctification of the Spirit's baptism shall further lead us away, farther and farther from them. As it is written in Romans 5, The free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man Jesus Christ abounded for many. Where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, so that sin reigned in death, grace might also reign through righteousness leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ. Which brings us to our next point. Abide in Christ alone. Since we are justified by his grace as a gift, Jesus has set us free from sin so that we may abide in him for all eternity. Jesus set us free from sin and death by his work on the cross. So we're no longer fiends and enemies of heaven and the Savior, but instead free indeed to be his friends forever. So remember this, Emmanuel. The price he paid was permanent. Christ died and rose one time for all time and for all people, meaning we have been given a gift, hope and salvation. It cost us nothing, but it cost God everything. So may we never diminish the price paid by Jesus by charging interest on his forgiveness towards others, but rather give and forgive freely in Christ by the grace of God. Because of the merciful sacrifice of our Lord on the cross and the fulfillment of his promise to rise up again from the dead to reign over sin and death in the grave, we may now rejoice by grace alone in the true hope of Christ for everlasting life. As we read in our epistle lesson, by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight. Through, through the law comes knowledge of sin. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. Which brings us to our third point. Abound through faith alone. Last Sunday, uh, this congregation gave me many gifts for Pastor Appreciation Week. They were free and cost me nothing. But they did come at a price because you paid for them. And all the time, effort, thought, and money it cost you says something. It means that you thought I was worth the cost because you love me. And so thank you. They were wonderful. I love you too. But even more amazing, and why I bring this up, is that this is just what Jesus has done for us. He gave the greatest gift, the righteousness of God through faith in Christ Jesus for all who believe. And he paid the greatest price. He faced a life of suffering, endured death on a cross, offered up his shed blood and overcame death in the grave in his risen flesh to forgive our sins and grant us heaven, eternal life after death, through faith in him. As it is written, for there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all. Indeed, the extent of God's redeeming love and mercy displayed in the passion of Christ and agony of the cross exceeds all earthly measure. The mental anguish, social scorn, emotional distress, physical torture, and spiritual anguish Jesus willingly experienced for our ransom and salvation is far beyond our comprehension. Indeed, as fully God without sin, yet fully man, of human flesh and blood on earth, thus sharing every mortal difficulty, sorrow, struggle, trial, and temptation all men and women encounter, our Lord tremendously trembled in anticipation of the saving deed that he was sent to accomplish. Surely if there was any other way under heaven's gates to redeem us from hell's chains, he would have taken it, but there was not. Which is why Christ, the Son of God, fervently prayed in the Spirit to his Father just hours before his crucifixion. My Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but your will be done. Jesus would have given anything, save the world, to spare himself the excruciating fate of the cross. 
thus faithfully abiding for us his people. He stayed the course, not sparing himself the excruciating fate of the cross, but rather giving up everything, his own body and blood, to save the world, every soul blessed with faith in his work of grace. This means nothing less than you and I and all who believe in the soul-saving word of truth, Jesus' death and resurrection for the sake of forgiveness through repentance by grace through faith, We were, are, and forever shall be God's precious treasure. And thus we're promised a priceless crown and mansion in his glorious presence and in his kingdom. So praise the Lord, for heaven knows you will never know the pain and hell he went through as long as you believe by grace that he did it in love for you. As our Savior said in John 15, Abide in me, for apart from me you can do nothing. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love, for greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. There's truly none better, not a single deed greater than his work for our saving, the bitter labor of love he did in dying willingly at Calvary before rising in victory on Easter morning to set us, once captive to sin and death and the devil, at liberty. This was to show God's righteousness so that he might be the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. No one will ever love us more than this, than he who gave his life to set us free indeed eternally. So according to God's word alone, and unbound from sin by grace alone, may we freely and faithfully abide in Christ alone, that we may abound in righteousness for eternal life through faith alone, and all to God's glory alone. For in Christ Jesus we know the truth, and the truth has set us free. Christ died and rose for our forgiveness, and this is the free gift of God, Redeemed, we may truly abide in the Lord both now and for all eternity in heaven. As long as we remain in faith, we shall be saved, and we are never alone. Free in his deed, we are free indeed. So remember, Emmanuel, God is with us. Soli Deo Gloria forever and ever. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. We now join in confessing our faith together by reciting the Apostles' Creed. Please rise. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, we give you thanks and praise for all your goodness and tender care, especially on this Reformation weekend. Thank you for the gift of your son and for the revelation of your will and grace. Implant your word in us and give us fertile hearts to keep it and bring forth its good fruit in our lives. Lord, in your mercy. God of grace, keep us steadfast in your word and prevent our wayward hearts from following false, false gospels that lead us away from you. Provide your church with faithful pastors who preach in purity and joy that we are saved by your grace alone, through faith alone, because of Christ alone. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty God, you have great power, and yet you set 
you act with mercy. Teach those who lead us to use power rightly for the preservation of order and accomplishment of justice, the protection of life, and the defense of the weak. Give us wise, godly, faithful leaders who will follow your commands and serve with integrity. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, remember all who face adversity of any kind and comfort them by your Holy Spirit that they would acknowledge their afflictions as the manifestation of your fatherly will. Especially, we have prayers of thanksgiving for answered prayers that Joe, Ray, Dawn, Lynn, and Dennis are all home from the hospital. Continued prayers of healing for Dawn, Joe, Tom, Kim, Alicia, John, Katie, Peggy, Arthur, Gary, Billy, Marion, Doug, Wally, Frank, Raymond, and Nancy, all being treated for cancer. <clears throat> and prayers for Ruth, Grayson, Michael, Nicole, and Melissa, Judy, and Jake. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you have given us the certainty of sins forgiven in your Son, set forth as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. So lead us to eat and drink your holy body and precious blood in repentance of faith and now and always. Lord, in your mercy. Preserve your church, O Lord, and each of its members of Christ's body, that we may not surrender the true gospel for any reason, but be kept in this faith and fear throughout the days of our earthly pilgrimage. Until that day when we all, your people, shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the reward you have prepared for us and all who have loved his appearing. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Just as always, a reminder to please fill out the worship card that you were given when you came in, and make sure you fill it as completely as possible with everybody's name on that. Also on the back, any prayers that you would like. The elders and pastor every Wednesday morning pray over the prayers that you put there. Also, don't forget to put answer prayers on there. It's always good that when we're praying for things to find out when those prayers are answered. So please do that. As far as any other announcements, please check your bulletin and uh, follow the things that are in there. We worship the Lord with our offering.
Please rise for the offertory. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We continue with the Agnes Day.
Please rise. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Just two quick things before we uh, sing our sending hymn. Uh, the first is that uh, this week, uh, obviously, we will have Halloween also known as Reformation Day, uh, October 31st. Um, so, uh, of course, it's perfectly fine to have uh, fun on, on Halloween uh, with the kiddos because um, we're, we're not scared of plastic ghouls. Uh, we're, we're not even afraid of the devil himself because of faith in the grace of Jesus. Um, but uh, I would like to encourage you on that day uh, to just spend a moment reflecting on what a gift grace is and what a blessing it is to have the word of God uh, that we can believe and share uh, with all the world. Uh, the second is that uh, next weekend, uh, we are going to be celebrating all saints, um, and we will be reading the names of the faithful departed, uh, certainly those that have uh, gone to be with the Lord over the past year, um, as well as uh, many years uh, prior. Um, so uh, uh, please, uh, today, if you have not yet done so, uh, submit the names of your loved ones, uh, parents, children, grandparents, um, anyone uh, that was close to you that you know is now in the kingdom of God and uh, um, awaiting us. Uh, with the, all the saints in glory. Uh, our sending him a mighty fortress. <laughs>
peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.